Welcome to the first nervous system lecture for advanced anatomy and physiology. In this lecture we're going to be examining the sensory motor pathway. We're going to be looking at how the nervous system accept, accepts information, how it processes it, and then how, it, how information leaves the nervous system in order to move muscles. We're going to begin with this simplified diagram of the central nervous system showing the sensory part of the sensory motor pathway. Here we have the brain and the spinal cord and you remember that the central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord. We begin our sensory portion of the sensory motor pathway by looking at this sensory receptor, this triangle. You might remember from general anatomy and physiology that there are various sensory receptors. You have photoreceptors in the eye, you have uh, a sound, you know, pressure receptors in the ear that sense sound, you have uh, baroreceptors that sense pressure, uh, chemical receptors or chemoreceptors that sense changes in chemical, chemical concentration for taste and smell, and many other receptors there. <clears throat> so what receptors do is they uh, pick up information from the environment. And this information is in all different sorts of forms. You could have light rays, you could have changes in uh, pressure, uh, so on and so on, vibration. And what these sensory receptors do is they convert this information in all these different forms to information in one form so that it interfaces with the central nervous system. <clears throat> so that's the function of the sensory receptor. So the sensory, infra sensory receptor picks up all of the information converts it to electrochemical information. Now once this information is converted, the information is carried to the central nervous system via what's called an afferent pathway, which is typically a nerve. So the information then moves to the central nervous system via an afferent pathway. Then the sensory information moves up the spinal cord, or we say it ascends the spinal cord to the brain, so it goes past the, or goes through the brain stem and into the brain in an area of the diencephalon known as the thalamus. You might remember that the thalamus acts as a relay station. Its function is to relay sensory information to the cerebral cortex. So the thalamus then picks up the sensory information and routes it or relays it to a certain part on the cerebral cortex. So what we can do is we can use a story to illustrate this sensory motor pathway. And the story I like to use is one about spilling coffee on my arm. So let's say that I've gone to a drive-thru um, and, I, and I got a hot cup of coffee. And so I was in a hurry, so I grabbed the coffee really hard and the lid popped off and the coffee spilled on my hand and on my arm. Right, so this would constitute some sensory stimuli, some sensory information. So let's look at our sensory motor pathway. The sensory information, meaning like the heat and the pain, um, was picked up by the sensory receptors in the skin and my arm and my hand. <clears throat> this information then was converted to electrochemical impulses and traveled to the central nervous system via an afferent pathway. <clears throat> which was a nerve, probably, which was a spinal nerve. It then reached the central nervous system, the spinal cord, and started to move up toward the brain following um, an ascending pathway through the spinal cord to my thalamus, which routed it over to the cerebral cortex. At that point, I understand or I realize that my hand or my arm is burning. So now we can look at a little more detail here. We can add some more detail. <clears throat> when this information moves up the spinal cord, we see that information of a certain type follows a certain pathway. And that pathway is called an ascending tract. So sensory information in the spinal cord moves up the spinal cord following a specific pathway called an ascending tract. We also see that once this information hits the thalamus, the thalamus routes it to a specific area in the cerebral cortex. In this case, it's the postcentral gyrus. And so we see that the postcentral gyrus, you remember, is in the parietal lobe, 
and the parietal lobe function is to is sensory information it creates the uh, image of sensation or the experience of sense of sensation and specifically it's the post central gyrus that has to do with the sensory information so the information is routed specifically to the post central gyrus of the parietal lobe so let's just review <clears throat> so i spill a coffee the receptors in my arm and my hand, pick up that information, convert it to electrochemical impulses. The electrochemical impulses follow an afferent pathway, which is a spinal nerve, to the central nervous system, the spinal cord. The information then ascends the spinal cord following a specific pathway called an ascending spinal tract, goes through the brainstem to the thalamus, is routed by the thalamus over to the postcentral gyrus of the parietal lobe. And at that point, I feel the heat and the pain from spilling the coffee. All right, so now I have to elicit a motor response. So now I have to set the cup down or move my arm or my hand. <clears throat> so this motor response begins in the precentral gyrus, which is located in the frontal lobe. So the motor response begins in the frontal lobe. So the frontal lobe <clears throat> elicits the motor response and it follows a slightly different pathway on its way out of the central nervous system. The pathway bypasses the thalamus, moves into the spinal cord, follows a different pathway called the descending spinal tract, and then exits the spinal cord following an efferent pathway known as the spinal nerve to an effector which is a muscle organ or gland. In this case, it's the muscles of my hand and my arm, and I go ahead and, and set the cup down. So now we have a more complete picture of the sensory motor pathway. So now we can look at a little more <coughs> specifics regarding this sensory motor pathway. In other words, just where are the spinal tracts? But before we do that, we have to review some of the anatomy of the spinal cord. So this is a transverse section of the spinal cord. You remember that the spinal cord consists of a core of gray matter followed or surrounded by white matter. And so the white matter is divided into what are called funiculi. There's a posterior funiculus, an anterior funiculus, and two lateral funiculi. So these tracts that we're talking about are going to be located in the funiculi of the spinal cord. The gray matter does not consist of funiculi, it consists of horns. So we have a posterior horn, we have a little bump called the lateral horn, and then we have the anterior horn. And so that's the gray matter. <clears throat>